this evening, Mr. Panzeroni, let's talk about, about the dermatological condition, exactly sebaceous cysts. We introduce it with this video. Sebaceous cysts are neoformations that contain some keratin, sebum, and dead cells. All wrapped in a fibrous capsule, they develop in various parts of the body and are due to occlusion of a sebaceous gland. Dr. Bruno Zani explained to us very briefly and very simply that sebaceous cysts are basically neoformations caused by the occlusion of a sebaceous gland. I, however, immediately want to ask what a sebaceous gland is. Are glands that are present on top of the hair bubble and produce sebum. It is then put on the outside of the hair bubble and serves precisely to keep our skin soft. Here, and it basically said that cysts are composed of a gland, a fibrous gland, with keratin, sebum, and dead cells inside. Yes, because the moment we have this stratified squamous epithelium that starts to overgrow, this goes to invaginate inside the hair bubble. It goes to close precisely the duct where sebum comes out. And this leads to the accumulation, therefore, of sebum, but also of keratin and dead cells. Here, certainly medicine has treatment protocols for this type of pathology. Let's go and see what they are. The most effective and safest way to get rid of a sebaceous cyst is to make a small incision in the skin with a micro scalpel to get out that sebum that has been trapped inside the skin and in a few minutes eliminate the problem. Be careful because this has to be done by a doctor or dermatologist to avoid that home remedies such as compressing or crushing of these cysts can make the problem worse, make the cyst even more infected and then get to the point of then to having to remove. In the same way always surgically this cyst but then also leaving more visible marks. Here's Panzeroni, this was Dr. Antonino Di Pietro who basically told us that the only way to get rid of sebaceous cysts is to cut, then incise through obviously a surgical incision and then not to do things then at home with home methods. What do you... I fully agree because we are clearly talking about a surgical operation also because it is not a pimple that we can squeeze it. If we don't go and remove the capsule inside fibrotic, it is clear that then there are recurrences. If anything, the problem is that medicine has not even, however, posed the reasoning of thinking about what the formation of these sebaceous cysts depends on, and therefore there is always only the surgical operation left. So, Panzeroni, it is my understanding that you once again do not agree with this kind of, in a way that official medicine, protocol medicine, deals with this kind of pathology. Yes, of course, that we always have to ask why certain pathologies appear, then welcome the removal by surgery, but then we have to pose the problem of not having them come back. But of this approach, it is evident just the fact that those who deal with this pathology are the dermatologists. It is as if these sebaceous cysts are a localized problem, when in fact it is a much broader discourse, and we have to reason about the alteration of our metabolism and therefore our hormones. Look, Panzeroni, basically, as you usually do, you took the pathology, you went in depth, you went and researched scientific research, etc., just to confirm what you are then saying here on the broadcast, and you created a tutorial that I would tell the director to air. Let's see it together. Sebaceous cysts are caused by two distinct phenomena. On the one hand, an excessive proliferation of keratinocytes, and on the other hand, an elevated production of sebum by sebocytes. In fact, in sebaceous cysts, the stratified squamous epithelium wedges into the epidermis in the underlying dermis, continuing to grow and forming the cyst lining. This phenomenon is caused by the overexpression of P63 protein, which increases epithelial cell survival, and the underexpression of IGF-BP3 hormone, which controls cell replication. Both of these processes are promoted by the excessive presence of insulin and IGF-1 hormone, which stimulates P63 protein 
and depresses IGF-BP3 hormone. Excessive sebum production is induced by the excessive presence of IGF-1, which transmits its lipogenic signal into sebocytes. These processes allow the accumulation of sebum, keratin, and dead cells within the cyst, which will continue to increase in size. Here is Panzeroni. The tutorial was very explanatory and talked about basically two phenomena, the formation and the growth, obviously, of the cyst. Let's start with formation. You have to make us understand what is the role of these two proteins, IGF-BP3 protein, which then is binding with IGF-1. Uh, basically, we have layers of our dermis, of our skin, and one of them is the stratified squamous epithelium. There are cells there that are flattened and have a very short half-life. Let's say that both their duplication and their lifetime depend on the expression of two elements. The first one, precisely, is this protein, the P63, and on the other side, instead, we have IGF-1, which stimulates precisely their duplication. The alteration of these two elements lead to excessive duplication and too long a half-life of these cells. Here, then what happens if these very cells become immortal or if their duplication is increased by IGF-1? It happens that we have a squamous layer that begins to grow and then begins to invaginate within the hair bubo and this clearly leads to the closure of the sebaceous ducts precisely. From there begins the formation and then the accumulation of both sebum, keratin, and dead cells. Just the excess precisely of the P63 protein leads to these cells that precisely immortalize and therefore never die. On the other hand, is a deficiency of IGF-BP3. Actually, this protein that binds IGF-1, so its deficiency allows an excess of IGF-1 that precisely induces the duplication of these creatinocytes. Look, in the video, they also talked about excessive serum production. Does this occur because of an excess of IGF-1? Yes. Nature, many studies have shown it that it is precisely the excess of IGF-1 that binds of the proteins within the sebocytes, and this leads to excessive sebum production. But it is very clear that, for example, we see that those who follow Life 120 have a reduction in the phenomenon of oily skin, but also even a cancellation of the acne problem. Panzironi? You basically tell us that sebaceous cysts have an etiopathogenesis, basically a birth hormonal cause. Will you tell us, obviously, what are the causes of these changes? Uh, the alterations are always due to our diet. Uh, basically, one food that really creates big problems for us is milk, because there is a strong presence of IGF-1, even in aged cheeses. So it's as if they don't give us injections of IGF-1, this hormone that leads to the duplication on one side, precisely of keratinocyte cells, and on the other side, the production of sebum. And uh, on the other side, we have the phenomenon, of course, of carbohydrates that through insulin go to increase the production of this enzyme. And 63. Uh, then, I wanted to ask you about these very things. You, what kind of correlation is there between the enzyme P63 protein and IGF-1 production? What kind of relationship is there? We have these two phenomena on the one hand, P63, that goes to increase because it is the same insulin that acts on stimulating this protein because the same one that we find inside the adipocytes. We know that insulin has to force the adipocytes to take up sugar and turn it into fat, but it also has to prevent this excess from leading to their death. So in place for this reason, insulin serves precisely to prevent the death of these of these adipocytes and the same protein is found inside the keratinocytes. So we have this dual phenomenon. On the other hand, we know perfectly well that when we eat a nice plate of pasta, we go to activate a hormone, which is GH. GH then stimulates the production of GF1UN and this leads precisely to an endogenous overexpression of this growth hormone. On the other hand, Insulin acts towards the reduction of IGF-1-BP3, which is that IGF-1 binding protein that as long as it binds, it makes IGF-1 inactive, but the moment it depresses it, it makes IGF-1 more available and therefore creates those damages that we just described. Always very clear are Adriano Panzeroni. So, at the conclusion then of the focus where we go to explain the scientific part, you usually bring in a witness who tells us how he had this kind of pathology and how he resolved, thanks to Life 120, how he recovered. 
So I would say let's have Mrs. Laura Zanella from Ferrara come into the studio here. Good evening, Mrs. Zanella. Good evening. Please have a seat. So, Mrs. Zanella, you were suffering from sebaceous cysts. May I ask how many years? I was 32 years old, 33. You were 33 years old, and how often you had to have the surgery? Let's say about a year and a half. Every year and a half, I had Every two, three cysts that always had to be removed. You had uh, two or three cysts to remove, so you were removing two or three cysts. First of all, where did you have these cysts? in the scalp, scattered all over the place. And when I had to have the surgery the first few years, my hair was shaved completely. And then they would do precisely this surgery of... local anesthesia around the cyst. And then with the scalpel, they would... remove the cyst, and then afterwards the stitches would be put in. And you would wait about 10 days then after that to remove the stitches. Mrs. Zanella, how many operations have you had so far? 17. 17? Yes. For a total of how many cysts did you remove? 50. 50 cysts did she have? You had, let's say. Look, exactly, no, you told us that they were cutting her hair, that, I mean, they had, they were making these kinds of incisions and so on. But exactly then, how did the doctors act besides that? What were they telling you? But the doctors were basically telling me that there was no treatment to do or something to take, but the only thing was to do the surgery, just the surgery. Only surgery and that's it. Mrs. Zanella, I want to make you remember basically the last surgery. When was it and how many cysts did you remove? So the last surgery was in March 2017. I had three cysts then. Later during the surgery, another one came out. So four cysts I removed. Then that was it. However, I know that the doctor also told you something during this. I, when I had the last surgery, the doctor told me, um, actually, it was me who told him, look, there are two small, um, small ones. What should I do? Because I had seen that anyway. They were very small. And the doctor, the surgeon told me, look, they are so small, you can't operate. Because clearly, having to do anesthesia, that is, they were small. He says, let's wait five, six months. Let's wait for the next one. Let's wait for... Look, but is it true that they were blaming a genetic factor? So they it were telling you it's a genetic thing. It was a thing. genetic thing, and that I would have to, as long as I live, to have these surgeries. I know you had the last operation of what, I mean, we are talking about in early 2017. After how many months did you start following Life 120? I started following Life 120 in August 2017. And I really started to be really, really strict. Strict, strict, just because I was saying this time I have to make it. I started to follow this lifestyle. And then four, five, six months later, I noticed that the cysts, the little small ones, were still the same. And now, still, a year and a half later, they still remain, so they haven't grown anymore. So, Mrs. Zanella, I understand that the cysts, those two small ones you had at the last surgery, have remained unchanged. However, have you had any other cysts in the meantime? No, absolutely not. I want to ask you one more thing. Obviously, you are a lady, so anyway, you also like to please. I know that whenever you had these kinds of problems, you had not only the problem of the aesthetic, let's say, of the surgery and things, but also your hair had become, no, not really. The hair had suffered so much because so many anesthesia. Because for each cyst, two, three punctures were done around. So the hair suffered. 
and I had found that anyway the hair then afterwards fell out had become weak thin. And then afterwards since I started Life 120, I saw that I still had a great improvement even in my hair hair, I was no longer losing it. Listen, one last thing, now you don't see cysts appearing anymore, so you see these surgeries moving away. Can I ask you, what does that mean for you? Well, for me, it's a great victory, a great achievement, a new life, because really being subjected to every to two years, so always having these surgeries, always having my head bandaged, always having my head full of stitches, had really become a drama. I thank you. I thank you. I thank Mrs. Laura Zanella for being here with us.